All right, I am back once again, and as promised last time, I don't have a Nikon camera with me, or a camera at all. I have a photo book. And this is one I've had for a while I really enjoy, called Empire by John Tonks. Um, I love the cover of this book, first of all. Just the color and, like, the texture and this, this photo and the way it has kind of the, uh, the letterboxing around it. It's kind of embossed as well. It's got, like, a 3D feel. Same with the uh, title. Just a nice, high-quality cover that you don't see on every photo book that comes out. Uh, but I really love the subject matter of this book. As you can tell, it's got a British flag on the front, so you know it's probably something kind of British or European, so you would think. It's kind of true. It is kind of British, but it's not really European, so to speak. Uh, this is a book where the uh, photographer traveled around to a lot of territories in the Atlantic that are still British territories, but they're pretty much all small islands, uh, things like Ascension Island and the Falklands and a few others. And it's fascinating to me because it's kind of a modern-day travelogue in some ways because he goes to these obscure places that most people just don't really know much about. You've probably heard of some of them in passing, but you've probably never really been to them because they're so remote. And that is the thing that really fascinates me is he's giving you a glimpse of something that you probably wouldn't see otherwise. And I, as you can probably tell, if you remember watching some of my other videos, I took a lot of inspiration from this because my photo book uh, that I made has kind of a similar cover. I got sort of a British flag behind barbed wire. It's uh, got kind of a gray color. Um, his is called Empire. Mine was called End of Empires. Uh, you can definitely see there is a bit of a relation there. Um, I got to say, his book quality is vastly better than mine, and I think even his choice of color is a little bit superior to mine. That. Uh, the gray on there was always something that just seemed a tiny bit off to me. It's not terrible, but it just doesn't quite suit the subject matter, I feel. But his, I think, kind of works. You have this photo with kind of the, the overcast sky and the gray on the cover just really brings it all together. Uh, I'm going to just open up the book and kind of flip through it. He's got a really nice um, intro cover thing that kind of shows the islands he went to. Nice stylized map. I'll just flip through and show a few random images. Uh, he did a lot of portrait work. I believe he shot all these portraits on a Mamiya 6. Not that it's overly important, overly important, but I think that is kind of interesting. Uh, good camera that a lot of professional photographers use. And he, uh, he just took a lot of cool photos of remote places and just interesting people. And uh, one reason I'm talking about this book now, uh, it kind of came back to my attention because I recently realized there is a video on YouTube. There's actually a TED Talk that John Tonks gave about this book. And he shows some of the photographs from the book. And he goes into a lot more detail. He tells uh, the backstories. He kind of tells about some of the places and some of the people and little events that happened to him on the island and how he kept in contact with some of the people. And, you know, they told him little stories and things after he left. And uh, it's quite interesting uh, because he has some photos in here of a, a guy and a cow that, were, uh, that he took photos of and they actually died shortly afterwards. So he had the last known photos of this... Uh, fisherman and uh, a cow, which incidentally was the last cow on whatever island it was on, I forget. But it's uh, kind of an interesting little thing. And if you watch the TED Talk, he gives a, he doesn't include every single photo from the book, but I'd say he includes about half of them, and I think he throws in a couple of bonus photos that aren't in the book. And uh, I just really like this book. It's just the little, the portraits and that kind of glimpse into these people's lives. I mean, here you have a living room of some people who live on a small island that you're, you're never going to go to, but you've kind of been invited into their, into their house, and you get just a small glimpse of what their day-to-day -day life would be like. And it's just, uh, it's really interesting to me. I'm sure some people would find it kind of boring, because there are a lot of portraits, and they're kind of staged portraits that I know some people don't like. Uh, but he has a lot of um, scenery, too. There's quite a few that are kind of interesting little scenes and more like landscape photos and uh, I just really like it and I think he just kind of used the uh, the square format of the Mamiya 6 really well uh, you can tell he knew what he was doing because almost every image he, he fills the frame and does things very evenly I mean this one you might argue that there's a little bit of dead space down here at the bottom but like everything is very balanced and clean uh, like even the way the uh, the ceiling lines up here with the very top of the uh, frame that seems pretty incidental, but that's not always something that's easy to do, and it's like everything just fits into this frame, and it's all so even and spaced out so perfectly. Um, like right here you got a groan, you got the guy here, the cake, you got the sort of banner here. The balloons are pushed, pushed up pretty far to this upper right hand corner, which I know some people would say that, oh, we should have included all of them, but I think this works really well, really well because all the colors down here are very drab. You've got whites and off-whites and kind of light blues and little splashes of some like purple here, but then you've got the bright colors, the the red, the orange, and this neon green are all up here, kind of isolated in the corner, pushed off. So they, they don't attract your attention too much. Uh, I just really like that. I think he did a very good job. 
Um, like right here, you've got the guy with his, his machine gun. I'm sure that police officer on the island, I believe he's the only uh, police officer on this particular island, but I don't remember which one. It probably says over here. But uh, he never actually had to use his gun. He never even arrested anybody. Uh, but again, you just see he, he lined it up so perfectly with this hallway. The walls and the guy in the middle, it just it all lines up so perfectly. And even the use of him standing right there parallel to the door and having the light kind of come in and bathe him on one side and his shadow kind of trailing off that way. It's just very beautiful, and he, um, he clearly has just a great understanding of what makes a good photo and how to balance it. I don't know exactly how much editing he did after the fact. I'm sure he did some, but this was all shot on film. He did it on a Mimia 6, as I said. I don't know exactly what type of film stock he used, but um, it doesn't look like anything too miraculous. I'm guessing it's probably Kodak Portra. Uh, what speed, I'm not exactly sure, but I would, I would guess it's probably Portra. But I think it's very well treated because he, he, it has nice colors in it. I noticed a lot of people, when they use portrait, it ends up looking kind of washed out or everything seems kind of pale. But he's got a good balance of colors. You get good, rich, true-to-life colors, but it's not over-exaggerated like you get with certain things when people like pull film or when people uh, use certain types of film. Like I think sometimes Cinestill and even Kodak Ektar uh, tend to over-exaggerate certain colors, especially reds. So it's, it's just a really uh, nice book with some really nice images. And... I just love the backstory. I'd love to do something like this. I'd love to just travel to one of these like remote places and kind of document life and uh, go there for a while. I believe when uh, John Tonks went to these islands, uh, some of them are so remote you can only reach them via uh, like a, a Royal Mail steamer, an actual ship that delivers cargo and, and passengers. Uh, and it's a few days sailing out of South Africa to one island and then a couple of days to another one of the islands and the ship comes back on a big loop. So once you're dropped off on the island, you're stuck there for like a week or two. So he spent about a month on all these islands and I think that's just kind of interesting. Uh, he has a little information on the front. I'm not going to read all of it and give it all away. This is definitely a photo book I really like and I would suggest picking up. might not be easy because I don't know if it's really still in print or how common it is. That's an issue you find with photo books a lot of times is they're, they have pretty limited print runs or they're, they just don't stay in circulation for long. But there is that, uh, that TED Talk video. I would strongly suggest looking at it. It's very interesting. I'll uh, post a link down in the description. But uh, this is just a little glimpse of one of my favorite photo books from a man who's a very skilled photographer. So if you'd like, you can check it out. He's got a nice website. I would suggest going to it and trying to support him because I think he does some really great work.